In this video, I will explain why I think MathCAD is the best software for hand calculations in structural engineering. I'll show you how to transform handwritten calculations like this into something a little bit more organized that looks more like this. Let's go. In my experience, MathCAD has been the best software to do hand calculations. And here are some of the reasons. First, it's a free software. There is a paid version, but the free version you can still do most things in it. Second is because if, if you don't do these calculations by hand using a software, you're probably gonna write them down on a piece of paper. And it's just harder to make corrections to these calculations, to store them, to keep track of them over time. So as a civil structure engineer, I love using MathCAD because it's all digital. It's all electronic and I can store it and a year later, if I want to go back to it or someone else wants to go back to it, it's easier to come back to. And then the third reason is because as engineers, we learn more when we do the calculations by hand, as opposed to relying on other software, such as eTabs, Intercalc, RAM Elements, or other design software that do all the checks for you. You just input some parameters and the software spits out the results. So it's almost like a black box. If you don't truly understand the concepts, you can still design something, but not truly understand why some things work and why other things don't work. So to really grasp structural engineering, I think it's very important, especially for young engineers, to develop the habit of doing hand calculations. Now that I explained why I like this software, let me show you how to download the free version. We'll go into Google and just type MathCAD. Go to the official PTC website because they sell several products besides just MathCAD go to try and buy you can see here that they are already on version 7.0 but i believe you should still be able to use the worksheet that i'm going to show in this video which is from version 6.0 and then you can get the free mathcad trial which is usually the full version for 30 days and then after 30 days you just have the express version which is the version that i'll show so here you just fill out this information mathcad may contact you asking if you wanna buy the, their product and if you don't wanna buy it, you just say no. You hit submit and then you download the software. Now I wanna show you how I'm going to transform my calculations from this video. I'll put a card up here in which I used one note and I did, did the calculations by hand. I'm gonna use that same problem and show you how I resolved the same question using MathCAD. Here, is the problem from that video. So you can see here that I used one note, but this could be a piece of paper. And I just wrote down all the steps and have the tables here and everything. So it's good. I think it's a great way to just do the calculations by hand and understand the concept. And you can check out all my commentary discussing this subject a little bit more in depth on this video. Now, if we were to do something here on MathCAD, it would look something like this. It's just a notepad, pretty much. And then because I have the express version, I have this watermark here. But if I want to get rid of that watermark, I can go to document and then select draft. Now I just see this, you know, you can take a screenshot of this and paste into Word or a PDF maker if you want to make a nice calculation package. But here it's simple because I can literally just type a parameter. For example, if I want to say that this L is equal to 20 meters, 20 feet, it already recognizes the, the units when I typed FT as feet. And to get to define a variable, I hit colon. Now if I just hit L and equal, it gives me that same variable now in meters because it's the default unit. But if I delete that and get type inches, it already does all the conversions. So it's nice because now if I want to multiply something, say 20 or 30 times L and then hit equal, it literally gives that answer to me. And I can hit control T and add some text here, say geometry, and then 
organize things here as I go and build up my, my calc. As an example, I'm gonna show you here that same example problem from my other video on how to obtain the design flexure strength of a reinforced concrete beam. So here is a PE problem, but it's also a common structural engineering problem that, that structural engineers calculate on a daily basis. So here, as you can see, I separated out my problem, the material properties, I listed them all here, the geometry of my beam, I put some charts the same as, my, as I indicated in my previous video, I calculate the depth of the compression block, which is this portion here, the variable A, and then we can make some if statements. Here I built this if statement for the, the beta one factor, just to follow this table here from ACI, depending on my F prime C, I have different beta one factors. So you can do all of this in the free version as well, which is nice to build templates. Here I calculated C, which is the distance from the compression fiber to the neutral axis, which is this dimension here. So it's nice to have all the visuals and also the variables here so that someone can easily follow your calculations. I calculate my steel strain and here to determine the, the phi factor because my steel strain falls in this transition zone here which is between the steel strain at yield which is 0.002 and 0.005 in my case here I got 0.004 so I'm in this transition zone. So again, to assuming my stirrups are not spirals, I can calculate my phi factor using this equation, which it would be somewhere around here below 0 0.9. And again, I built this if statement to account for all the three different groups, so to speak, for my phi factor. And then finally, I calculate my nominal flexure strength here, and then my design flexure strength as well, which is when I multiply by my fee factor. Just as a disclaimer, remember that this worksheet is for entertainment purposes only, and if you are going to use it for a design or for uh, an assignment, please make sure that you double check all of your variables and let me know if you find any errors or things that could be improved on this worksheet. This was just a sneak peek of how you can use MathCAD for different purposes. It's a software that I use on a daily basis. I actually use MathCAD 15 more than MathCAD 6, but regardless, I think it's very beneficial to take advantage of these free tools that you can find on the internet to expedite the design process and make you a better engineer or a better student. Mm -hmm.